We're going to define some of the interest rates more formally in this module. And again, those interest rates that we're going to be specifically looking at are yield to maturity, spot rates, and forward rates. We're going to begin here with yield to maturity. And we've already used yield to maturity in our last week's modules. And you've seen this before. Given a coupon payment in each period and the payment at maturity of a bond, you can calculate the, matur the yield to maturity if you know the price of the bond. And again, the yield to maturity will cause the price of the bond to equal the discounted cash flows of that bond. The yield to maturity important here does not vary across periods, so the yield to maturity or Y is the same for period 1, period 2, and period 3. Again, if you know the price of that debt instrument, you can calculate the yield to maturity. Again, if you know the uh, the interest and principal payments on that bond, and if prices change, yield to maturity will also change. The yield to maturity can vary between two bonds of similar maturity if they have differences in cash flows. So two treasury um, two treasuries with the same maturity can have differences in yield to maturity because of differences in the cash flow. And this results because of the, uh, the, um, the characteristics of yield to maturity. Yield to maturity, as you see listed here at the bottom of the slide, assumes that funds can be rest, reinvested at the yield to maturity rate, which may not be the case. And it also assumes that forward rates and spot rates have not changed over the time period. If either one of those two things happen, or if you have forward rates and spot rates that vary, yield to maturity of two different maturity bonds can vary if they have differences in interest rates, or cash flows, excuse me. And we'll give an example of this at the end of this module. Now we're going to define our three interest rates. We've already seen yield to maturity, Y. We're also going to have a spot rate for period T, and that's Z sub T. And this is a yield on a zero coupon bond, or bill. So the spot rate, and we'll show these to you in, in the next slide, takes a cash flow sometime in the period and discounts it to the present using the same, same, same rate over all the entire time period. And it's a spot rate for period T. A forward rate gives you the interest rate from t to t plus 1. And again, we'll show the, the exact mathematical definitions of these three rates on the next slide. We're going to give a definition, mathematical definition of those three rates now, beginning first with the yield to maturity. We've seen this already. Again, I'm giving this yield to maturity calculation and the yield ma maturity rate for a, a, a bond with three time periods coupon payments made in periods 1, 2, and 3. And in the third time period, we receive our par value back. As you can see here, the yield to maturity discounts those cash flows using the same rate, so the rate doesn't vary across time periods. Our spot rate is this following, is this rate. So we have three spot rates for this. Z sub 1 gives the spot rate for period 1, Z sub 2 for period 2, and C sub 3 gives the spot rate for period 3. And again, what it does is takes a cash flow in a certain time period and discounts it back to the current time period. So each one of those Cs will, 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 will take a cash flow back to the current time period. If we have perfect markets, Cs will not vary across different maturities because of arbitrage opportunities, all the spot rates should be the same. That differs from the yield to maturity because they can differ depending on how the cash flows are structured. Our third interest rate is our forward rate. And again, for this process problem, we have three. A forward rate from 0 to 1, so that discounts our first cash flow. 1 to 2, so that discounts our second cash flow along with our first rate. And a forward rate from 2 to 3. Those forward rates, again, are giving us the interest rate expected in period 
2 to 3, 1 to 2, and 0 to 1. One item to note here is that the spot rate and the forward rate for the first time period are the same. If you look at them, they're the same, same value. If you know the spot rate, and if in fact if you know all the spot rates, you can calculate the forward rates relatively easy by making use of this one, um, one relationship and then moving forward through time. Just a couple more definitions here, just to, so we're clear. Um, and we talk about this in the in the chapter. There's a the definition of a strip, and that what a strip does is takes an underlying instrument and separates the payments. And typically, what you see with treasuries bills is you strip out the coupon payments and set, separate them, create another instru instrument with strips with coupon payments and the maturity payment. The maturity payment, that strip with just the maturity payment, is a serial coupon bond. And it has one payment at the end of the maturity. And here, the yield, if you have a zero coupon bond, you've stripped the, the bond, and you have one payment at its maturity, the yield to maturity equals the spot rate. If you go back to those definitions, spot rate will equal the yield to maturity. This makes very nice calculations, obviously, for the spot rate. And that's why if we could find these zero coupon bond instruments, um, we, w we could calculate the spot rates very easily and then apply the forward rates very easily. Unfortunately, most, um, most, most bonds, uh, treasuries, aren't stripped when you look at the market so you're going to have to work a little bit to calculate the zero coupon bond rates or the, so those 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 spot rates get, would be very easy to calculate if we had zero coupon bonds which we typically again for longer maturities don't have I'm now going to give an example of how two bonds with similar maturities could have different uh, different uh, yield to maturities and what we're going to do do here is we're going to take an example from a textbook. This comes from page 394. We're going to have two bonds, bond A and bond B. The zero, the, both of these are five-year bonds with a hundred-year, hundred-dollar par value, and they make semi-annual payments. The coupon payment on bond A is 12 percent. Coupon on bond B is 3 percent. And we're going to calculate the price of these bonds and then their yield to maturities given that the forward rates or the spot rates for the first two and a half years is 6% for, for both bonds because spot rates um, uh, are the same and spot rates for the second two and a half years are 7%. We're going to calculate this example in this spreadsheet which is named Hill Difference Example and you can pick this off, off the Compass website. Our cash flows for bond A are going to be the $100 par value times our 12% coupon rate, which we're going to divide by 2 because we're using semi-annual periods. This is a 5-year bond, semi-annual periods, of so we get 10, 10 payments. And at the end of the 10th period, 5 years, we get our $100 back, $106. So those are our cash flows for bond A. For bond B, we again have a $100 par value, 3% um, coupon rate, again divide that by 2, a dollar and a half per period, come down here, plus 100. So there's our cash flow for bond B, $101.05 in the fifth period. I'm going to lay out our discount factors here. And again, I said our discount factor for uh, the first... Uh, First two and a half years is six percent, so this will equal one divided by one plus point oh six divided by two, because again we're dealing with semi-annual periods. So there's our discount factors for our first five periods. Our second five periods is divided by. 7%. Again, if these were all the same, 
we would get the same yield to maturity calculation for these two bonds, but because the spot rates differ, we're going to get a different yield to maturity. Well, those are our discount factors. We're now going to calculate our discounted cash flow, which is our cash flow times our discount factor. $75 at the end of the period. So our cash flow here, or our price, is the sum of these numbers, $121. So our cash flow to purchase it is $121.17. And then if we calculate the internal rate of return, or the yield to maturity, three point four six percent or on a yearly basis, 6.92%. Let's do the same calculation for bond B, and since we can just copy these over. This bond has a price of $83, and we'll have a yield to maturity difference, 3.49 or 6.97. You can see here the 6.97 differs slightly from the 6.92. Again, that is because there's a differences in cash flows across these two bonds and then the assumptions that go into those yield to maturity calculations. Again, this points out why we need to calculate the spot rates for these two bonds and because the spot rates will be the same given that markets equilibrate to one to the to the correct spot rates. Again, to summarize here, Yield to maturity can vary across the across instruments with similar ter, similar maturity if there's a difference in cash flows and difference in spot rates across those per, periods and spot rates should not vary if markets are complete and arbitrage opportunities exist. Yield to maturity here represents a blended rate across cash flows. And again, yield to maturity can differ across similar maturity bonds. And what we should be doing conceptually when we're discounting cash flows is using the spot rates because they will not vary and they're market determined.